Welcome to another episode of Whatcha Packin'. My name is Michelle Visage. Glad you are here. Today we have Mercedes Iman Diamond. Hi, Michelle. Hi, lovey. Where are you from? I'm from Minneapolis. Minneapolis. Yes, Minneapolis, Minnesota. Which means a lot to so many of us pop music freaks and junkies. Yes. And, <laughs> you know, the whole Prince and yep. Janet Prince. Jackson and the whole Jimmy Jam and Terry Lewis yes. phenomenon and just great music coming out of Minneapolis. So you're here with us on RuPaul's Drag Race season 11 as the first Muslim queen. Yes, I am the first Muslim queen, and it was something I dreamt about, to be the first Muslim queen to be on Drag Race. Why do you think that is? You know, you know, being Muslim is, is hard. Like, you know, a lot of people look as different. In America? In America, yes. Yeah. In America, it is hard. And what did your family say when, did your family know you did drag? Well, I, I don't have mother and father. Mm -hmm. My mother passed away when I was a year. And oh, you're an itty bitty baby. Yes. After giving birth to my little sister. Oh, honey. So, and then my dad was killed six months after that. So, who raised you? My great grandmother. Oh, dear. Who passed away last year. You know, she moved to America with me and she took care of me. From where? From Kenya with okay. me. And me and my two sisters. So, I do have an older sister and a younger sister. And she knew about you and who you are and what you do? She kind of knew because. I'm coming home, you know, like I'm taking care of her, you know, and sometimes I'm leaving my place in drag and she think I'm some girl that just visited me. Oh, no way. <laughs> she did. How old were you when you moved here? I was 10. When you were moved here from Kenya? Yeah. And you moved to Minneapolis? Straight to Minneapolis. Why? A lot of people from uh, East Africa moved to Minneapolis. I don't know why. Weird. So and old. literally, M Minneapolis is like the highest Muslim population, actually. Oh, is it? Mm -hmm. See, maybe that's a reason. Yeah. So you were on the main stage at one point, and you disclosed some really scary health things that happened to you. Yes. Tell me about that. So, well, this the whole thing started. Um, one time, I went to the airport. I was taking my grandmother to the, my great grandmother to London. And then when they ran my ticket, they said, sorry, you can't go, you can't fly. And I'm looking at them like, what do you mean I can't fly? What is going on? What's the problem? And the lady was like, give me a second. And she left. 45 minutes later, while I'm standing there like, oh my God, like we have to catch a flight. Right. What is going on? And then the lady came back and she was like, I can't let you in. You can, you can walk out of here freely or you can get arrested. I'm looking at her like, what are you talking about? Like, me? Like, what's going on? And then she's like, oh, I'm sorry, you are on the watch list. <gasps> you know, I had to send my great-grandmother. Yeah. I went back home. I'm just like, oh my God, my great-grandmother doesn't speak English. I don't know who's going to look out for her. You know, she, but being by herself in the plane, Scary. I was like, oh my God, I just left crying. And, and my grandmother was like, I'm going to stay. And I was like, no, just go. Did you find out what happened? You know, your name is so common and they put you on the watch list and think that you had to do something with, like, be it my old name was Ali Muhammad. And then I was like. It's like Bob Smith. <laughs> exactly. So how did you get off the, the watch list? I went to court. I changed my full name. You had to change your name. I changed my whole name. Oh, you poor Trust thing. me, once I changed my name, I was free to fly. Yeah, but it fly still shows anywhere. you how f***ed up this oh, system yeah. is. Oh, yeah, it was crazy. When I got sick was because I could, since I couldn't fly everywhere and I was going through all that, I was driving every state, like doing shows back to back. I'm a manager at a bank, so I'm working seven days. So day bit. job and night, night job. Mm -hmm. Seven days. There was like, I would come home at like five in the morning, take a couple hours sleep, get ready for work at the bank. And I did had a uh, stroke. Yeah, because you were not treating your body right. Yes, my body just said, okay. So what happened? Did you wake up one morning and you couldn't move? What happened? Where it were you? It happened while I was driving. Oh my gosh. So I was driving from Milwaukee to Minneapolis. It happened and I pulled over and I was like, oh my what God. What did you feel? I just like literally, I was just like, 
going. While I was driving, my whole body was just like slowly. I was holding the steering with my hand just fit, and I'm just like shaking. I was like, what is going on? And I just pulled over and I couldn't move my foot. It was scary. The like, whole right side. Mm -hmm. A week after that, I had a second one. And At then, the hospital, or were you home already? This one, I was home. Okay. So, and then this time, I am on a wheelchair. I couldn't even walk. Oh, my gosh. And I was like, oh, my God. You poor thing. But look it at just, you now. Look at you sucks. now. It sucks. Like, you know, I was like, why? What did I do? Right. You know, like... So, after you got off of this whole drama of the... You're in the do not fly list, for doing nothing, just for having the wrong name, and you're just trying to make ends meet by working two jobs, that you drove your body into a stroke. Yeah. Not just one, but two. So what did you do to get strong? Focus my body. Don't overwork. I was like, I'm done. No more traveling. Taking just, better just, care of yourself. Oh yeah, you're... absolutely. Getting enough rest. And exercise. Exercising. Water. Yes, eating healthy food. Good. <laughs> so I'm back. I'm back. And I was like, And oh, do you have to see a neurologist and so you stay on top of yes, everything? I did. Everything. I'm back to Mercedes. I think the story, <laughs> the moral of the story that I got from that, because I think each one of us has been connected to hardships in some way. You've been through a lot. It wasn't just driving yourself. I think you had a lot of emotional baggage, and that's how it manifested and released. So I think kids that are watching it, that have their own emotional baggage, or you know, think they can't get through something, because a lot of people watch our show when they're sick, or they're in hospital or something. This is um, a big wake-up call and a help for them yeah. to see that you came through, and not only came through, you're up on RuPaul's Drag Race. Oh my God. Looking beautiful. Dreams do come true. Dreams do come true, not only being the first Muslim <laughs> queen, but being somebody who's come back from not so good circumstances. Oh God, yeah. Yo. Can we talk two seconds about your gorgeous outfit you have? Yes, good. yes. Let, tell me, start with this beautiful one with this hat and this you know. gorgeous, do you make your items? Some of them, uh -huh, and okay. not all of it. Okay. But I know how to sew. Okay. <laughs> I had that's the first thing I was like before I audition. I need to learn how to sew. Good girl. I do not want to go there. And you know, the first you know episode might be, oh, you gotta do some sewing. Yep. Oh girl, I do not want to go home. You know, we love a design <laughs> challenge. <laughs> yes. So the uh, Mercedes is known for like you know jackets, you know showing legs. She's short, you know, but she likes to show some skin. So covering the whole body is not her tea, but her signature look is jackets, hats. Love a jacket. You know, choker, you know, belts. So this is kind of like an S&M harness. Yes. Almost like an usherette or band majorette or something. Yes. Right? Oh my God, yes. Very beautiful. And then I wear breastplates and those, uh, the belts that come down covers right on the nipple. Ooh. So it's just like, you just see breath, you know, titties right there. Titties everywhere. <laughs> yes. I love it. <laughs> And this beautiful middle one, is this... Um... This was going to be my uh, final look, uh -huh. my, you know, if I would have made it to top four. <laughs> um, it, this is, represent part of my culture. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to bring something to my culture, you know, and yellow is one of my favorite color. Beautiful on your skin tone. Oh, thank you, I love it. And is this traditional Kenyan? Because this looks this like is, Indian. Yes. Okay. So my uh, grandparents are from Yemen. There you so, go. So, you know, Yemen. You've got a lot of multicultural stuff yes, going on. It's all mixed up. I love it. <laughs> and pretty much they do the same thing. And I was like, you know what? I'm definitely going to use this one. I love it. And that's a beautiful color for you. Thank you. And this one on the end is really sassy. Oh, thank you. Very Vivian Westwood oh, moment. God. Yeah. I, he has a gloves. I totally forgot the gloves, but you know what? <laughs> that's okay. <laughs> the beauty is you can wear these wherever you want. Now. Oh yeah. Except that one. Well, because she's too expensive. Oh, and she's heavy. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's one suitcase alone. Oh, God, yeah. You save her for those special moments, and you'll oh, know absolutely. when. absolutely. You'll know yes, when. You know absolutely. what I mean? Mercedes and Mon Diamond, you are a joy. Thank you. I can't thank you enough for being so honest. Thank you. And transparent and, and telling your story and helping thank some you. kids out there. Thank I you. appreciate it. I appreciate your strength, your journey. Everything that you've been through is for this moment for you to share and help. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you, sweetheart. So and on social media, Mercedes Iman Diamond. <laughs> Mercedes Iman Diamond, yes. There you go. African thank princess, honey. Amen. <laughs> thank yes. you so much, sweetie. Thank you, Michelle. Mwah. I love you, honey. I love you too, honey. Thank you so much for joining me for another episode of Whatcha Packin'. I'll see you next time right here. Bye.
Hey beauties, it's Sasha Velour, the winner of RuPaul's Drag Race Season 9. Do you want all the hot Drag Race tea? Then you better subscribe to VH1's YouTube channel, and you'll have all the fresh videos sent directly to your inbox. Now that's something not to joke about.